Hello everybody and welcome to the SI Digest. We run through the biggest esports business related news stories of the week. I'm your host Tom Daniels, the sub-editor of Esports Insider and today we have five huge news stories in the world of esports business. So in this week's SI Digest we're going to be covering the 2021 League of Legends World Championships being relocated to Europe, Virtus Pro, Astralis and Alliance partnering with cryptocurrency platform Bybit. The Esports Integrity Commission issuing a two-year ban to former Heroic coach Nikolai Hundum peterson Wild Rift's Origin Series Championships being held in Stockholm. And finally, we're going to be talking about Canby Group's acquisition of esports data firm Abios for up to £22 million. So, let's get into the digest. Our first story of the SI Digest sees us talk about the 2021 League of Legends World Championships and it being relocated from China to Europe. Now, details surrounding the event, such as where exactly in Europe the tournament will be held, have not been revealed. However, in a video posted by Riot Games, James is John Needham, who is the publisher's global head of esports. He detailed, and this is the quote here, that accessibility for the highest number of teams and their best players will be a key factor in deciding which you know location they will pick. That accessibility factor was definitely highlighted in the announcement video that Riot Games did post, saying that if they had kept it in China with the Delta variant going on, then there was a high chance that some of the teams and some of the players would not be able to make it to the World Championship. So this is definitely seen as a major factor as to why that they are now trying to find a place and find a venue in Europe itself. I kind of hope that a venue has already basically been secured because the League of Legends World Championships isn't that far off. We've actually got teams qualifying for the League of Legends World Championships right now throughout this entire week. So I do think that it's very crucial that once kind of a venue is cemented and fully set that it is announced and also it'd be very interesting to see how this kind of changes the the style, the look of the League of Legends World Championships because normally it kind of like the graphics and the design and the set design really kind of immerse itself in the culture of the city or the region that they are in. So that would be really interesting. There are still issues when it definitely comes to tournament organisation and so it's nice to see that at least there are backup plans being put in place should certain situations get worse. Our second story of the SI Digest sees Astralis, Virtus Pro and Alliance all secure partnerships with crypto's currency platform Bybit. Alongside the traditional brand integrations that we're starting to see from a lot of these deals which includes logo placement and integration within like social media and on players profiles, the deal actually does see the players of these organizations participate in Bybit's annual gamified crypto trading competition, the World Series of Trading 2021. Obviously, cryptocurrency partnerships and esports now are very much becoming synonymous with each other. And every week, we normally get another cryptocurrency deal. And obviously, Bybit last week um, had a partnership with Navi as well, which is slightly similar with the other three here. But with these three, that participation into the trading competition, into the cryptocurrency competition, is very, very interesting. I do think it's very interesting that Bybit is also kind of um, associating themselves with some of the the biggest brands in the region specifically obviously you've got Virtus Pro which are Russian you've got Navi who are Ukrainian you've got uh, the Swedish organization in Alliance and the Danish organization in Astralis as well so it's really interesting to kind of see them not just go for kind of a title but actually go for more of a regional approach through this and it'd be very interesting to see kind of what the viewership will be like for the world trading competition and whether kind of having esports organizations integrated into that will be beneficial to everyone involved. A third story of the ASI Digest sees the Esports Integrity Commission issue a two-year ban to Danish CSGO coach Nikolai hudson Peterson. Now, according to the release, the ban was a result of allegations made against Peterson when he was at his former team, Heroic. The allegations stated that Peterson shared information about the team's strategy with opposition opponents via Google Drive just before the start of IEM Cologne 2021. Before going into this story specifically, Specifically, it is important to note that from a competitive integrity standpoint, the results revealed that the shared material was not accessed by the recipients of the opposing team at IEM Cologne 2021, which means that the event wasn't compromised as a result of this. Peterson has claimed that the ESIC chose not to hear him out prior to the conclusion of the investigation on August 27th. He also alleges that, and this is a quote, the only thing ESIC has done to threaten him by saying that if he chose to appeal the verdict, he would be given a five-year ban instead. 
ESIC has since then denied these claims, stating that Peterson was employing tactics to avoid public, uh, public scrutiny. Personally, I think stories like this really highlight why it's good to have an integrity commission in an in esports or in sports in general, because we can't be having you know coaches sharing information such as this to opposition teams no matter how significant it is like integrity breaches breaches so really affect kind of the commercial aspect of esports as well because if you know there is dodgy dealings being done or underhanded tactics or even gamemanship it could cause sponsors commercial partners you know, to not look at esports in a favourable manner. And so it's important for, you know, organisations like the Esports Integrity Commission to stamp out these causes. And hopefully, as we're seeing with, you know, this case, hopefully this case is kind of a an example to people who feel like they can do and get away with this. And hopefully that gets stamped out and, you know, we don't see many stories like this. Moving on now to our penultimate story of the Inside Digest and Riot Games has revealed that the first League of Legends Wild Rift Origin Series Championship will be held in Stockholm, Sweden with a $300,000 prize pool. Now the Wild Rift Origin Series Championship is a massive deal for Riot Games in their push into mobile esports. It'll be really interesting to kind of see what the setup will be like for Stockholm and you know, whether we can kind of see a, a glimpse of what mobile esports for Riot Games will be in the future. I'm really looking forward to the event. I think the event will be really good. It's very interesting to see that it's in Stockholm, Sweden. And obviously this is a little bit of speculation, but with the League of Legends World Championships currently not having a place, that is possibly a place that they also might be looking at, along with a few of as well. So I'm really looking forward to this event as someone who kind of wants to see how Riot Games can execute mobile esports, I think this will be fascinating. There's not much more really to say about this story. However, like I said, it's nice to see that mobile esports is continuing to grow. As a sector, we're getting more and more titles, more regions, more expansions. And it's only a matter of time, I think, before it truly becomes mainstream in the West. We already see its popularity in the East, but I think it's only a matter of time for the Western audience to really embrace mobile esports. Our final story on the Inside Digest sees us talk about sports betting services provider Canby Group announced the acquisition of esports data and technology company Abios for around $12.57 in cash. Now, in addition to that figure, 10 million roughly will be paid in earnouts related to product development and Abios's future revenue performances. So as a result, the acquisition could eventually rise to around 22 million pounds. Now, for those who are unaware who Abios are, they have provided data, odds and visualization services, sorry, to sports betting operators such as Kindred Goop, Leo Vegas Group and Pinnacle Sports. And according to the release, the data company generated around 1.5 million in revenue last year. In addition, it has been revealed that despite being purchased by a sports betting provider, Abios will continue to offer its services to both Canby and non-Canby customers. One final little piece of information is that Abios's CEO, Oscar Froberg, and CTO, Anton Yena, will remain in their leadership roles following this acquisition. Overall, again, we, we kind of talked about it a little bit in the past with, uh, with data being so important now in esports, especially as esports betting starts to rise. I don't think it's that surprising to see a, a sports betting provider purchase an esports data platform. That being said, the purchase is a lot of money and it's very interesting to see that it is like a lot of it in cash, but also a lot of it in earnouts dependent on basically performances of how essentially esports data is going to grow in the future and how Abios as a company is going to grow in the future. Overall, though, I think this is great for Abios to kind of have the backing of a big group like Canby. And also, it's really good for Canby if they do want to kind of expand the, you know, betting landscape a little bit more. And going into esports data, I think, is a solid route into terms of expanding their profile as a company as well. And that is it for this week's ESI Digest. If you do want to read up on any of the stories that I have just talked about, then head over to Esports Insider's website. Also, don't forget to follow us on Twitter, LinkedIn, subscribe to us on YouTube, or wherever you're listening to us as well. But until next week, I'll see you then.